Psalm 33. Rejoice in the Lord. Now this psalm is going to be all about the Lord. A wonderful psalm for the Lord. What do we rejoice in? We rejoice in the Lord. Many have got that wrong. Many rejoice in anything but the Lord. O ye righteous. So you righteous, you saved. You've done what God told you to do. You're to rejoice in the Lord. For praise is calmly, that means proper, for the upright. All about those who are in God, all those who profess to be of God. Praise the Lord of the heart. That's a string instrument. Sing unto him with a psaltery, another instrument, and an instrument of ten strings, a string instrument. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Make up your own song for the Lord. Why do you got to get involved with, you know, with someone else's? Listen, a lot of the, the hymns that are in the hymn books were personal poems written by the author. They weren't even to be known to be put into singing. So a lot of times when you sing, I surrender all, they, that is for the person that wrote that hymn. And when you got a congregation church of, of lost people and saved people and worldly Christians, and, and then you got them saying, I surrender all, you got them lying. A lot of times when I study the Bible, I will put instrumental hymns on, and as I'm reading and listening, I'll have my own words from my heart. That's what that verse means. <clears throat> Play skillfully. So you... You're not to haphazard your music for the Lord. And I, I've been in churches where, you know, we're, we're going to do a special. We did no practicing at all. You know, we just pop in a CD, MP3 player, and we just, you know, karaoke for God. That's not, that's not approved. Skillful. With a loud noise. Now, I like that verse because... With the public ministry I have at the farmer's market, I have been shut up by a DJ so he can play his music. And God's preaching is not allowed to be amplified. I am prohibited to be amplified of preaching the gospel while the DJ is playing. And then when it comes to judgment, I hope the guy gets saved, but when it comes to judgment, be like, you know, the loud noise wasn't supposed to be your tarnished, satanic, worldly music. It was supposed to be the gospel being preached. Today we got, you know, we hear this music come out of these cars, rap and rock and roll. That's not to be so. And according to this, turn up the Christian music. Get it loud. For the word of the Lord is right. Many don't profess that. Many don't believe that. And all his works are done in truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the word, according to John 1 and 1 John 1. So again, there, there's a Jesus right there. He loveth righteousness. That's Jesus. He was made to be sin for us who knew no sin, that the righteousness of God would be in him, us. We don't have no righteousness. You love his righteousness and judgment. And people come up to you, judge not least to be judged. God loves judgment. Paul says we're to judge ourselves. We're to judge other people's things. Not people. We're to judge the thing. Now, if you profess to be a Christian and your life is tarnished and worldly, and I have the right to say, you know what, I'm going to deal with you as a lost person. I've been thinking lately as a person in my life. You know, when I, when I asked that guy about salvation, he gave me a, a weird, wrong answer. And a family member, well, he's saved. And, but I was like, no, I don't see it. He hasn't professed it. You have, but not him. So I will look at that man's unsaved. I hope I'm wrong. Now, we don't know. I don't know. But James says faith without works is dead. 
God loves judgment. God looks for, when you look at the sins of your life, say, God, you know, I'm not supposed to be doing this. You're saying I'm to confess, and you're saying I'm supposed to fight it. I'm supposed to fight the flesh. People say, judge not least you be judged. Well, you need to get rid of your driver's license because you've got to judge a red, yellow, green light. And from what I've seen, many people don't know what a red light is. People fail to use their blinkers. A blinker is a judge who say, I'm going left or right. There's judgment all around us. I dare someone to say, judge not least. I dare to walk in a courtroom say, walk up to the judge. Judge not least. I dare you to do that. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. What's the goodness? Sun, sunshine, rain, wind, trees, fruit, beef, pork. Cereal grain, barley. The earth is just, Jesus said, the rain upon the just and the unjust. By the word of the Lord, now we're going to look at the creation. That word of the Lord, the word of the Lord appears 258 times. The heavens made. And when you run back to Genesis chapter 1. And God said, let there be. And God said, let there be. God didn't do no magic trick. God didn't pull anything out of a hat. He didn't go into a box and open up the box and, oh, here's the sun. Oh, here's Mars. Oh, here's a universe they're never going to see. He didn't do it. He said, let there be light. Let there be air. Let the water be to place and let dry land be. Let there be. The voice of God created. And all the hosts of them. All the host of what? The stars, the moons, the, the planets, the everything. Universes were made by God by the breath of his mouth. Inspired. Inspiration. That is what created. The inspiration of the Holy Spirit of the Bible has the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in the creation. And even in Genesis 1, it says, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, verse 3, and the, and the Spirit of God. And then verse 4 or 5, it says, and God spoke. There's God, there's the Holy Spirit, and there's Jesus. The Word of God, Genesis, I mean, John chapter 1 and 1 John 1. The Word being Jesus himself. He gathered the warriors of the sea, Genesis 1, together as a heap. He layeth up the deep in storehouses. You know, that the oceans hold a lot. Let all the earth fear the Lord. That's not so today. Not everybody fears the Lord, but that's what we're commanded to do. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. They don't. They stand in awe. Oh, oh, we found a, a one. We found one little bone, a tooth. It's got to be evolution. Oh, we found a whale out in the middle of the ocean. He needs to be saved. They go to they go to these uh, museums where they promote evolution. Oh wow, are those bones really the bones? Are, uh, you know, they say a lot of those bones are fake. They're they're plaster. They they fill in the gaps. Stand in awe of him. Stand in awe of him, not anything else. But it's all about the Lord. This this chapter. For he spanked his word, and it was done. Genesis 1. He commanded the ass to speak, and the ass spoke to Balaam. He commanded the, the Red Sea to part, the Red Sea part. He said, let the locusts come upon Egypt. Let there be darkness upon Egypt, and let there be light in Israel. And it happened. He commanded, and it stood fast. Let there be. The Lord bringeth the counsel to heathen to not. Now we're looking at Jewish favor in the Old Testament and the, and the enemies of the Jewish people were the heathen. And when they tried to go against Israel, they tried to destroy Israel like they do today. God's like, go away. You, you, you're done. God gave out off Hitler a time to destroy the Jews. And at the point he said, your cup is overflowing. That's it. You're done. 
and Israel's still around and the Nazi parties are gone. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. There are people out there who devise to, to do harm and injure others. We are in a day and age, I'm amazed today, is you got to be careful. There are there are many uh, abductions. There are many kidnappings. There are people being pulled off the street. There's a mall where I grew up as a child, and they're saying it is a, uh, I don't know how much truth, I'm not there, but they're saying there is human trafficking going on in, in that place. They're saying that people are stolen. They are they are taken hostage and they are sold for sex they're sold for slavery they're just put into bondage in 2020 yeah you know, they're saying you know, the african american they you know slavery is all done no it's not there's slavery all around the world today just because it's not happening in america it's probably happening in america you're hearing all these stories now these women are being captive in these basements in these attics in these rooms and they're just their lives are made most miserable by the person with the imagination to do them harm. It's all over the news. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of the heart to all generations. Blessed, which means happy, is the nation who God is Lord. Now you can't put that in America because, all right, at one time America's God was God. But they're telling him to leave. They're telling him to leave. They're telling him, get out of our schools. Take your commandments out of the courthouse. Shut him up on the streets. Don't come on property. Don't pass out your tracks here. Don't give it. Put the prayer rugs in the school. Make them do the yoga of the gods of, of, the, of the Eastern Oriental religions in the schools. But we can't have God. Christians are so blind. Our president said, you know, we could have prayer in the school. A Christian can have prayer in school and nobody know about it. I'll tell you what the prayer is allowed in the school is, is the Christians fighting the world. The, the prayer that happens in the school is when you put your legs on cross leg and you head towards me Mecca. When you get your prayer mat of Islam, you get your fish on Fridays for the Catholics. That's not Christianity. That's so as a Christian parent, you say, Well, I don't want my children to learn about the, the prayer of the heathen. It's like, hey, the president said, and you liked it. We can go ahead and do these prayers. I told you in an illustration of the night. I can show you here's here's a test paper put in front of my desk in a public school system. And I can show you how I can pray for that test. Okay. Question number one. Question number two. It's the religions that Jesus said they stand on the street corner. Oh, God! You, you guys got to wake up. You, you got to get your head out of the clouds and realize, you know, the devil is slick. You, you got too much idol, idolatry in politics and not enough in God. And the people. You got two or three days of that message, so. And the people who he has chosen, Israel, for his own inheritance. Now, there are people out there who believe that God is, they're a Christian, <laughs> they're Christian church, <laughs> excuse me, I can't, can't say that, that believe that God is all finished with Israel. You're a liar. You're a false prophet. You need to shut up. Now, as a nation, God's not dealing with Israel right now. He's dealing as an individual. Individual Jews that come to Jesus Christ as Messiah and Savior. But when once the once the church is gone, and once Jacob's trouble starts, then God's gonna start paying attention to Israel as corporate. And the second advent is Israel corporate. There's one nation, and they're not teaching that in the schools, they're not teaching that in anywhere in America. The Lord looketh from heaven. And he beholdeth all the sons of men. So God sees us all. From the, oh, excuse me. From the place of his inhabitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. In heaven, God sees everybody. That's remarkable. I can't see anybody on the other side. I don't even know who's on the other side of the earth right now. If I were to drill a hole straight through 
the earth. I don't know where I would end up. Probably water. I don't know what's going on in China. I don't know what's going on in Korea. I don't know what's going on in Europe. I don't know what's going on in South America. I don't know what's going on in Mexico. I don't know what's going on in Antarctica and Alaska. God does. You know, we pray to God. You realize when we pray to God, many people are praying to God at the same time you're praying to God, and God can decipher those prayers because he's God. He fashioned their heart to life. So all of our hearts are right. Jeremiah says our hearts are wicked beyond on it. Who can know it? Our hearts have the certain, uh, you, you can go online and find out the chambers of the heart. Everybody's got those chambers. Everybody's got blood going in and blood coming out. They got a right side of the heart. They got a left side of the heart. You can find a picture of a heart online, and everybody's got that heart unless they've, you know, been a deformity. You know, there's been a disease or, you know, a malfunction of the heart in their growth, but everyone has the same heart. Paul tells the men that he's dealing with, we've got the same blood. And I know there's red, there's, not red, yeah, it's red. But there's, you know, the O, the A, whatever. The, but it's the same blood that you can put African-American blood in me. You can put Polish blood. Well, I'm Polish. You can put Chinese blood in me. And, you know, if you put African-American blood in me, I'm not going to be black. And then if you put white blood into an African, he's not going to be white, made white. And if you take somebody who lives in in... Alabama, you give him blood of a Chinese, he's not going to go out in a rice paddy. But our hearts and our bloods are the same by God. How do you explain that? How do you explain the fact is without evolution, the creation of God, we have an organ in our body that has no need of a battery. You don't plug it in. And for some people, they just said uh, some celebrity, I think he just died 106 years old. 106 years, that, that's the age. His heart has been bumping. And that heartbeat is the first thing they will see in a child in the womb. When they do that ultrasound, I forget what, what week it is, they, and they can show you on the screen that little heart. Boom, 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 boom. You going to tell me that's evolution? I don't think so. He considers all their works. And Revelation uh, 20 said, and all the books were open, the work, men were judged by their works. Now works is not salvation, but God writes it all down. There is no king saved by the multitude of a host. A king has no power unless he has that power of God. He can have the he can have the strongest army. And God can defeat that army, and he has with snow and winter, and the army died because they ran out of food. He can take an entire Egyptian army and destroy it by having the, the waters of the Red Sea return back to where they were. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. Goliath was with head tall above all the Jews, and a little shepherd boy took him down in the name of God of God. A horse is vain thing for safety. People rely on their horses. People rely on their armor. They rely on their jeeps. They rely on their submarines. They rely on their, their battleship. They rely on airplanes. They rely on anything but God. Adolf Hitler again, the Nazi party had the greatest submarine U-boat force ever. And God destroyed it. Japanese had kamikazes that would get an airplane and purposely crash their airplane. They even had men that would get inside torpedoes and aim those torpedoes right at the ship. And where are they today? They found a couple of those torpedoes, but the skeletons remain. They handed it over to the Japanese government so they can be buried in the way of their God that didn't protect them at all. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. It's not by your muscle. It's not by your armor. It's not by your guns. It's not by your weaponry that will get you. 
when you don't have reliance in God where this nation's going, you're not going to be protected. And don't you ever stand against Israel. Because the Bible says, God says, I will curse them that curse you. Behold, the eyes of the Lord is upon them that fear him. Now, here are people who rely on God. 16 and 17 is no reliance on God. 18, they rely on God. Upon them that hope in his mercy. Now, God likes that. I am going to go in the name of the Lord, David said. I am going to put my family in the protection of God. Not, not uh, armed. Uh, I'm not going to put it in a security system. They find out some people, you know, they, they get these security systems and the people of the security systems come in and rob you. Jesus said a thief and a robber comes and he said he's the great shepherd. I'll take care of the sheep. And there's a difference between that. There's a hireling that won't take care of the sheep. The hireling is when somebody puts their faith in somebody that's not God, not Jesus. To deliver their soul from death. There's only one who does that, and that's God. You put your, your soul in Mary, you'll go to hell. You put your soul in Allah, you'll go to hell. You put your soul in Jesus Christ in the gospel. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. To keep them alive in famine. God will protect you. Even the Apostle Paul, with all the troubles and pearls he had, he said some of the things that, you know what? I fasted, okay. But there were times I couldn't get food. I still lived. Times I couldn't get water. I still lived. Our soul waited for the Lord, and that's any age. I'm waiting for the Lord to call the rapture right now. I'm waiting for the Lord to call me home by death. I know where I'm going. And to then be faithful and keep doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Death or rapture, I'm going to see the Lord. Even Job believed that. He, God, is our help and our shield. Some Christians today, they rely, and, and they're having all these kinds of seminars for churches, and they're meeting that how you can protect yourself from the vile wickedness of people coming to your church, get your guns, and, and, and load your guns up, and teach your people how to shoot a gun. Oh, I see, what, I see what the church is doing. They're pulling away from God. And you know what the media is waiting for? The media is waiting for that day when the, when the church kills somebody innocently. When they shoot somebody accidentally, the, you know, I guarantee the media will close on that congregation. The media will close on those on those Baptists. And the, the Christians killed a person who was innocent. And they'll have a field day. And don't let that media come in. But, you know, we have the right to report the news. And those wolves will come in. And they'll, and they'll be like, well, what happened? What happened? You put your faith in a gun. You put your faith in Smith and Weston rather than God the Father. It's coming. You will come. All this gun activism in the church, you watch, it'll come to your failure. And the media will enjoy it. To trap the devil's setting. For our heart shall rejoice in him, God. Man, I have heard Christians rejoice in anything but God. Because we have trusted in his holy name, Jesus. Jehovah. People trust in money and they even put in money. In God we trust. That money can be God. Your job and career could be your job. Could be your trust. You might as well put in God we trust, have every letter capitalized but that G. Let thy mercy, O Lord, thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us. We want, David says, let me fall in the hands of the Lord, let me not fall in the hands of man. According as we hope in thee, and the Bible says the blessed hope is, the, is Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is coming. 